Hi, Paul here from Trek It, and I've come up to uh, one of our favourite spots up in the Black Mountains on a very cold and blustery day to talk to you guys about the layering system. Now I'm sure most people are familiar with the uh, traditional three layer system, sort of a base layer, a mid layer and an outer layer. But I found that uh, with over 30 years of experience of yomping around the mountains that you can add another couple of layers just to uh, give you more versatility and flexibility within your system. Now the whole point of the layering system is allowing you to remain comfortable and dry and warm whatever the conditions and you can vary those layers according to you however whether you feel hot whether you feel cold personally i just got to think about exercise and i start sweating so i tend to go for thinner layers other people like them a bit thicker but the basic principle is to keep you dry and warm so it would be helpful if i could just probably explain to you why we feel cold and today is a really good example of the four principles of heat loss in the mountains So the first principle is through evaporation. So evaporation really is when warm, moist air evaporates off your skin, cools off and draws the body heat away from it. Uh, it's basically how your body regulates its own temperature. So if we were naked here today, which I won't do, don't, don't worry, I won't. But if we were naked and it was really hot and I was sweating heavily, that sweat would evaporate off my skin surface and I would cool down. So sweating is your body's way of cooling down. The problem with sweating is that if you're working hard in a cold environment, it draws the heat away very, very quickly. The other principle of heat loss is through radiation. Now, if we had like one of those infrared cameras you see on the telly and you're pointing at my body, you see that the hottest part of my body is my trunk. Here, this is where my vital organs are, my heart, my lungs, my kidneys, etc. And this is the part of my body that needs to stay the warmest that's the important bit. So if you could see through these heat cameras, a lot of heat would be radiating from here. The other part of the body where you lose a lot of heat is through here. Particularly like me, if you're a bit uh, follically challenged and you've got a bit of exposed skin there. So that's why a hat is really important. The other one to think about is convection. Now convection is basically the cooling by the movement of air, cold air, or fluids or water over a surface. So if you've got warm, moist air coming off your body, coming off you, and you've got a cold wind like today, you're gonna to really feel that cold. The colder air is gonna draw that warmth away from your body and you're gonna to start to chill down. Now we commonly refer to this as the wind chill factor. So wind chill has a massive effect on your temperature in the mountains. That's why it's really important to cut the wind out. The other way of feeling cold is simply through conductivity. So that's when something warm touches something cold and it draws the heat away. So uh, for instance, if you're camping and you're familiar with camping, you'll know it's really important to have a, a warm insulating mat under your sleeping bag to keep the cold from the ground coming into contact with you because it just draws the heat away from your body. So when we're out hill walking or mountaineering or climbing, our hands will come into contact with cold rocks and maybe even the ground. That's why I wear thick socks in my walking boots to protect my feet from the cold from the ground and particularly for scrambling. But also don't forget that when something cold touches you, i.e. cold rain, sleet and snow touches your skin, your head, your hands, your body, if your garments become wet with cold, that's going to draw the heat away from your body. So those are the four principles of why we get cold in the mountains. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll just go through each layer and describe its basic principles and some examples and how best to combine them when you're out and about in the mountains. Okay, so starting with the first layer, the base layer. Now I'm going to do this really quickly because it's probably about minus two, minus three up here with the wind chill and I'm going to get very cold. But this is the base layer. It sits next to the skin. It needs to be a close fit because you want as much fabric touching your skin as possible. And the principle of the fabric is to draw or wick the moisture away from your skin through the fabric to the outside where it can evaporate and that's going to regulate your body temperature. 
what you don't want for your base layer to do is to hold that moisture otherwise you're going to get a layer of cold water against your skin and you're going to get that radiant heat loss that we talked about earlier now this particular one is the Arcteryx Satoro base layer it's my favorite and this also adds a little piece of insulation as well so you've got some light insulation here you know okay it's, it's cold but I'm you know I'm a bit chilly but it's not too bad and it's drawing that moisture away so if I was active if I was yomping up the sugar loaf which is behind me up here I would uh, I'd be sweating heavily and this would draw that moisture away and keep me comfortable things to avoid don't wear cotton cotton's comfy it's nice to wear as a t-shirt down the pub but it's useless up in the mountains because it just holds moisture it doesn't pull it away it takes an age to dry and you're going to get that dreadful conductive heat loss so avoid cotton at all costs it's also worth mentioning here that uh, a garment that we all wear from day to day which is always generally made of cotton is our underwear our briefs our pants whatever you want to call them your shreddies your groddies whatever they're generally made of cotton not a good idea again avoid cotton find yourself a good base layer pair of underpants I've got mine on today obviously I'm not going to show you there's not a lot to see it's really cold and that, that's going to help with that temperature regulation and also with any chafing issues with moistness and dampness it all gets a bit sweaty down there if you're working hard and it's worth mentioning on the legs jeans an absolute no-no for exactly the same reason a couple of design tips here I prefer a zip neck it just gives me versatility if I'm getting cold I can zip it up if I'm getting warm I can expose that warm chest area to the cold and cool down so it just gives me a bit of versatility okay so this is my mid layer now the mid layers job is to continue that wicking process to get rid of that moisture that you're creating the sweat but also to add insulation so it's really comfortable to wear now mid layers come in a, in a massive variety of uh, weights and performances so it really depends on you and where you are and what you're doing as to how thick you want your mid layer it could be just a very 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 lightweight fleece it could be a heavyweight down jacket so you've got a massive choice and a massive versatility um, so just get your mid layer to suit your activity level and how much insulation you need like I said today uh, it was zero degrees down at the car park we come up onto the mountain with the wind chill so it's probably about minus two minus three and I'm starting to warm up now it's gone over the top of my base layer I can feel it trapping that warmth even when I'm stationary the only problem with it is being fleece it, uh, it's not particularly windproof so I can feel that wind chill cutting through the fleece fabric so I'm going to need to protect myself somehow from that wind chill effect now we've got two options here we could either go for the traditional outer shell layer or we could go for a light wind layer now as it's not raining and there's no not a lot of moisture in the air I don't need the full protection of a shell at this point but what I do need to do is cut the wind off so that's uh, an additional layer that I found is incredibly useful so I'm just going to dive in my pack and I'll grab that instantly feels better so this is again one of my favorite pieces this is all my own kit okay I'm not nick this out of the shop this is all my own stuff this is a, a Rab Ventus pull-on and it's an extremely lightweight soft shell material so that's a closely woven nylon soft shell so the closeness of the weave cuts the wind out but still allows massive breathability so if I was working hard I'm not going to overheat in this overheating can be an issue as well um, if you overheat you're going to sweat profusely and you're going to uh, encourage uh, and promote that evaporative heat loss and then you cool down quickly particularly if you've got stop and start activities like more walking and mountaineering so what you're looking to do is to maintain that breathability at all times and this is very breathable it's got good wind resistancy and it's also got good light rain resistancy so now if I was going off walking this is I'd be perfect in this now I'm a little bit cool but that's fine I'm going to warm up I know as I start climbing I'm going to warm up and this is going to allow it to breathe and keep me nice and dry so that's an, an additional layer that I always carry in my bag okay so the outer layer would be the next piece we're going to look at so the outer layer is designed to be your fortress it's designed to be your shell 
of protection against the rain, against snow, sleet, just basically against the elements and also to give you protection uh, just to add another little layer of uh, heat trapping warmth. This is my outer layer, this is the Arcteryx Beta LT jacket, it's probably one of the best all round mountain jackets there is and if I put this over the top of here I'm not adding a huge amount of insulation but what I am doing is just trapping any warm air that I'm generating inside and adding a complete waterproof layer to the outside. Now really starting to get toasty in here now, starting to warm up, I'm generating heat all the time just by existing so if I was working hard again it's, it's important to make sure that your outer layer, your shell garment is got good levels of breathability. You don't want that moisture building up inside that could give you that conductive heat loss from cold moisture on the uh, inside of the system. So we're looking to push the moisture away from your skin, get it breathing through your layers and escaping to the outside so you can regulate your temperature and protect yourself and insulate yourself. Now there's one other layer that I always carry with me wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, and that's my insulating layer. Now it kind of blurs the lines between uh, a mid layer and uh, a shell jacket, but it's just the kind of thing that you should always carry in your bag. When you stop for lunch, or if, uh, you know, heaven forbid you have an injury and you have, to be, you have to be stationary for a long period of time, your body loses heat really quickly. When you've been exerting yourself, your body's churning heat, and then when you stop, that heat disappears very quickly. And also on a day like today, as we climb up the mountain, it's going to get colder and I may just need a little bit more insulation. So my insulation of choice, as I'm sure if you've seen any of my other videos, is the Arcteryx Atom LT. It's a brilliant piece, it's a mid-weight insulation, nice and breathable and lightweight. And the beauty of these layers is, is that even if you've got your shell jacket on, just to, as a wind protection, or even if it's raining, you can throw this over the top, so when you stop, that's going to instantly trap all the air, warm air that's escaping from your system and keep you really warm. And because these type of garments, this is a synthetic film, um, because these type of garments don't absorb a lot of moisture and still retain their warmth when wet, you can overlayer like this. It's a really good way of quickly gaining heat without stripping off. Alternatively, if you didn't want to put your shell garments on because it's not raining and you are still cold, whip this back off. So I'm really going to start to warm up now, particularly if I pull the toggles in. It's got nice snug cuffs and you can see my wind layers come down over my wrists as well. So this is a really good way of giving you a massively versatile system. So it's a couple more layers more than your traditional three layer, it's your five layer. So you've got your base, your mid, your wind, your insulation and your shell layer. The trick is to combine all those layers to add and subtract layers according to the conditions. So for instance in summer you might have a lightweight short sleeved base layer with just a wind layer over the top and you whip out your insulating layer when you stop. Autumn and winter you might just keep your insulating layer in your bag not use it at all. Personally I prefer to walk with just my base layer and my insulating layer on because I start off a little cooler and as I warm up I get the, uh, the benefits of that insulation and if I get cold then I can pop my wind layer or my shell layer over the top of that as well. Uh, another thing worth pointing out is when you're selecting your insulating layer it's always worth going for a hooded version. So even if you don't uh, think you're going to want a hood or like using a hood it's a really quick and easy way of gaining more insulation because it's already attached to your jacket. The other advantage is they generally have a higher neckline for the hood so you can hunker down into here and it gives you protection for your lower face and your chin and just helps to get that warmth in around your neck. Another good way of regulating the temperature of your system without necessarily taking layers on and off all the time is to slacken off cuffs if they're adjustable and hem draw cords as well. Another really good way of dumping heat really quickly take your gloves off. Keep them to hand, keep them dry, keep them in your pack. 
starting to chill down nicely. Then if I'm working really hard, I can start to unzip from the neck to expose the chest area. I can literally do this one layer at a time just to regulate the temperature as I'm building up the heat. And this is why layers are so good. They're so much better than one big thick jacket. You can't do this with a big thick jacket. So there you go, right down to the base layer. Woo! And that's getting chilly now. I'm really starting to cool off, but I haven't removed the vital clothing system that I got on. And then as I start to cool down, I can do the base layer up. I can do my mid layer up. I could do my wind layer up and I could do my insulation layer up and that's trapping that warmth in around the body. So that kind of encompasses the whole layering system. Now obviously it applies mainly to the trunk of your body and around to here because this is where the most heat is and this is the vital parts of your body but it applies equally to your legs and your extremities. Uh, so I've got long johns on today and I've also got some soft shell trousers so that gives me a good degree of wind resistancy and breathability and durability in the legs and the long johns are providing me with a base layer insulation so this combination is working really well like I said it's cold it's windy my legs aren't cold at all now, if it started raining and I put my shell jacket on I'd also reach for my over trousers and put that on so I'm in effect creating a three layer system for my legs now there's a lot more detail about base layers and mid layers and outer layers on our other videos. Harry will put the links to those there. And obviously if you've got any questions at all, please post them into the uh, comment sections below. We'll always get back to you and it's always good to hear from you. So uh, I'm gonna go off for a little walk now, warm up a little bit, stood around. I'll see you guys later.